All right, so once you have your cases expanded on the top to where you can uh, put the, seat the bullet, I'll show you how to do that later, and you have your primer into place, the next step is to add powder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to consult my handbook. So Smith & Wesson. Here's my bullets, 300 grain bullets. So what I'm going to end up using for this one is I'm going to go with, let's see, what powder do I want to use? I'm going to do the Alliant 2400. So the starting grain for Alliant 2400 is anywhere, and once you start, you always should start at the starting load, the recommended starting load, and work your way up. Um, and then you know, if, if you want more velocity, you can add more grains. But you can see here the starting of 38 to 43 grains, there's really not that much of a difference there. So all these steps that I'm showing you, they're key into making ammunition. Um, they're all very important, and this is another step that shouldn't be overlooked. Otherwise, you can run into issues. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my 2400, and screw the lid here, get my powder measure, I dump some in here, that should be more than plenty, and I'm going to put the cap back on, and what I like to do is I always like to set my powder out that way there's no questions into what powder that I'm using especially when you have different types of powder that you can use and then the next step that we want to do is we want to measure the grains to make sure we get um, the correct recommended grains I think last time I did these I was right around 41 grains so I'm gonna go ahead and stick with that just for this demonstration so I don't have to recalibrate my powder thrower but have my handy dandy little digital scale that I bought. Turn that on. And then, here's what I like to use to uh, measure my powder with. Go ahead and zero that out. And we're going to throw some powder. and we need to make sure that we open it. There we go. And what I like to do is just kinda, you know, cycle it a few times to make sure I get an accurate measure. So there's my powder. I'm gonna measure it. And it's showing 42.5. So 42.5, uh, a hot load's 43.2. So what I'm gonna do, it's within range, but I'm gonna crank this Tighten this up just a little bit. Take another measure, recycle it. Okay, and we take a weight. Now it's 42. That should be okay with this demonstration. So as you can see, that's how much powder we're gonna be putting in one of these bullets. There's different types of powders, different um, granulars, I guess if you would say. There is more of a wafer based. This here kind of looks to be um, kind of more of a cylinder, if you will. But there are different types of powder. Some measure better than others. When I say measure, what I'm saying, what I mean is, you know, when I throw the powder, it's accurate every time. If you get the flakes, Sometimes they might be off by a grain or two, but this stuff here seems to measure pretty well. So what I'm going to do is fill my uh, cases with this powder that I just measured. Dump this back in. And grab my case, put it underneath here. There's one. There's two, there's 
three, four, and five. Now, even though this is the powder fit is pretty darn accurate, what you always want to do is you want to come in here and you want to visually inspect your cases. This is pretty easy because there's so much powder that I'm using. And uh, if you were to get a double charge, you would definitely know it would completely overflow. But you always want to look in here to make sure that um, you know the powder is about about the same height. Like I said, if you get a um, double powder, you're, you're definitely going to know it pretty much in any bullet you use. So visually inspecting these, these look great. So the next step, we want to see our bullets.